You know, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you talked earlier about how you were married at such a young age. Um, what led to that? Was that a decision that you made yourself? Did you follow, you know? You know no, it was, it was my parents' decision. Okay. Uh, you know, I come from a polygamous family where uh, my, my mother's mate, the daughter gets married and my mother wants her own daughter too, to get married. And then the, the one that presented himself then, they said I couldn't wait for my love. <laughs> then, uh, uh, I was forced into marriage, that's it. Yeah, and yeah. What, was your, what was the experience like being married so young? It was horrible. But, you know, our own time was a time where you don't have to decide who marries you. Your parents could arrange it, your cousin, your, you know, anybody can arrange the marriage and once your parents have accepted it, you are mm. in for it. Mm. Yes. Was it an experience where you grew into loving your husband or was it, would you say it was more of just a companionship? Uh, well, both. But, but when you're trying to please your parents, because in our, in our family, you don't come back from your husband's place. Yeah. You stay, manage it, make the best out of it. So when, when I came in, I saw what was involved. I put my head, because I couldn't disappoint my father who loved me so much. Mm. So I had to stay back. Mm. And once you start having children, in my place, it's not easy for you to abandon your children. And, 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 so I had to stay. Okay. The reason I stayed and carried it was one, to please my family, second to take care of my children. Mm. So whether there was love or not, does not matter. You know, earlier you talked a little bit about how your commitment and your need to be able to take care of your children was what inspired you to find whatever you could put your hands to. That's right. How were you able, where did you find that resilience and that strength to raise your children while you're in so many ways being the financial um, breadwinner for your family? When you discover that the man is already sick with, uh, Secular disease, terminal disease. You, you even have to battle with training the children and then helping him out. He's your husband, you can't deny it. Yeah. And you must do your duty as a wife. And coming from a Christian background, we are not allowed to divorce. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that uh, gave me the courage to really do what I could to. Uh, I, I remember the first time he went into coma. Mm. When he came back, he recovered and he said, if anybody told him I was going to be able to take care of him like that, he wouldn't believe. I said, why? But you're my husband. Mm. So everybody thought I was going to, at a time, bust out and say, I'm done with this. But I couldn't because I, I have my family to protect and I have my children to take care of. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, it's interesting because I'm listening to you. There's a very different sense of duty that I feel like my generation has now. What are your thoughts on the way marriage is you know, are being appearing to seem. Uh, do you feel like there's some room for change or do you prefer this new generation where people have their own agency to pick and choose how they marry? That is not marriage for me. That is just relationship that could be broken anytime. But for me, marriage is forever, till death do us part. And I don't care what I meet in it. And that's the way I brought up my children and that's what I'm looking out for. And by God's grace, with prayers, it's working out for me. Mm. I watch them and there was a time in, in, I went to UK to see my daughter and then my, my daughter behaved so I said, I don't know why you, Choma, should behave like that. The husband said, no, 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 mommy, Choma did not do anything. I felt so ashamed of myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see? So uh, what we have today baffles me. And uh, I feel for the children that they are giving birth to because I don't know how they will learn something better from their parents. Right. You know, so we are praying for this generation and the generation to come. That is our duty as good mothers to mm -hmm. pray for them because without our prayers, I mean, what you see today is a child's play. Hmm. In future, it will be worse. Hmm. And that's what we don't want to hear. I don't want my generation yet to come to ever have that kind of problem. So I started to pray for it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Very insightful.